So a lot of you aren't married, and you'd like to be, and you'd, you, 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 even if you want to get married, you, you'd like to do the right thing, right? And maybe you're interested in somebody, maybe you're already talking to them, maybe they're here with you, I don't know, you know, uh, but you're not married yet. So I wanted to actually, first of all, accept a reality. The reality of it is we're not living in righteous times, right? The Muslims, unfortunately, uh, are dating. They are going out to dinner, they are chatting it up late at night, whatever it is they're doing. Uh, and it's, it's happening, it's become a reality. And we have to deal with that reality. Our, our religion does not accept something that's wrong. And so I can't endorse something that's wrong. No, we don't have the right to because this deen is bigger than us, right? We are in submission to Allah's principles. But at the same time, there are practical, this deen is also practical. Like it gives, it doesn't give people idealistic solutions, it gives them realistic solutions. This deen at every step, I start, study this deen, and any principle in this deen, I come away with this deen is so practical. It's so, it's, it takes into consideration the realistic temptations of people, their tendencies, their temperaments, their situations, their difficulties. Allah did not send Islam to angels. He sent it to you and me. And he knows who He created. And He, he knows who needs guidance. Right? So if we are, if you know, there are audience members that are in this circumstance, some of you are parents, you know your sons and daughters are dating and you don't know what to do about it, and how to go about and you're in this strange bind and it's embarrassing to talk about because who do you tell? You know, that sort of thing. Or you're, you know, your daughter's insisting that she wants to marry this guy, or your son's insisting she wants to marry this girl, or something like that, uh, and she's not even Muslim. But anyway, what I wanted to ask you guys, because you guys are the, you know, I'm allergic to fiqh, so that's why these two guys are here. So, um, like what do you do in situations like this? Guy wants to marry this girl, they've already been talking or whatever, going out to dinner, and now they want to do the right thing, right? Or they want to get the family involved, they want to take good steps. Well, what do they do? And, and one thing that I would say, and I don't know if it's understood yet or not, but you don't wait a year to take your parents into confidence on these things either. You do it from the get-go. You do it from the get-go. You don't go get emotionally attached to someone, start going about things the wrong way, in a haram fashion, in a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're not talking about cultural norms now. See, here's the thing. Let's face it here. There is no way to know for a fact what type of person you're going to marry until you actually marry them. There is no way. And in fact, you know, psychologically speaking, dating will not do you any favors. It's not going to help you know that person more. It's going to help that person make a better impression on you, not help you know them more. Because until you live with the person, there is no way to completely know them. So that's something that is, you know, the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and things happen and this, that's true. But let's face it, collectively as a society, are we moving deeper into a marriage crisis? Or are we getting better because we've loosened restrictions and so on and so forth? Right? Whether it's the Muslim world or the Western world or what have you, because there were certain decency things, th cultural norms from a decency perspective that were in place even in the non-Muslim world, in the secular world. And there is a crisis in every part of the world in this regard. So when it comes to the Islamic perspective now, we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the turner of hearts, right? We understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the turner of hearts. Don't think that you can disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do things haram with the intention that you will write it one day. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to put barakah in your relationship. You're, you're fooling yourself. You're not going to fool Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are fooling yourself. Now there's a difference between two people, and even the sharia makes a distinction here, of two people that started something wrong, and they generally made tawbah. And Allah left it ambiguous. They actually made tawbah. They actually repented. They actually, and it wasn't a tawbah that was conditional on me marrying uh, this person. It was a tawbah of like, wow, I did something haram, astaghfirullah, let me now go and approach this right. It wasn't fine mom, dad, I'm sorry, but I still need to marry that person. And that's the only way that it's going to happen. You have to take them into consideration from the very beginning. And when parents are unreasonable, I will say this as well. You learn this the hard way, sometimes very later on, very much later in your life, but your parents are not seasonal. The whole world will turn their backs on you before your parents turn your back on, their backs on you. And you will learn that the hard way, right? Many, many times in life. With friends, sometimes with spouses, with whoever it may be, with mashayikh, with your teachers, with your closest friends. 
you will find that other people will be seasonal at times. Your parents will never be seasonal. They will not, even when your parents say, I'm not going to talk to you because you've decided to go forth with this, they don't really mean it. Right? They're saying that as a threat, hoping that you'll realize, recognize the situation. Now, when parents are wrong, when they're dead wrong, and when they're standing in the way of something that is halal, something that is completely pure, something that's been pursued in the right way, then at that point, there is the option in Islam to override them through a, through a particular pro process. But even then you have to ask yourself if it's worth it. Even then if you have to ask yourself if it's worth it. So I have a tough question for both of you. What's that? I have a hard question for both of you. Okay. There are people in the audience, inshallah they're not, but there are people in, in the ummah that are dating for a long time, a year, two years, three years. And the first advice that comes in my head is just get married. Doesn't matter who says what. Because you're, not, you're clearly not going to let each other I go. Totally disagree. You don't? I completely disagree. That's setting them up, that's giving a temporary solution. You'll make them happy for now, but their relationship is going to fall apart. Look, I, I do marriages and divorces. I've been do, I mean, I've been doing it for 10 years, personally. Okay. And most of the time when, when we gave in and said, okay, fine, just let them get married, they were divorced within three months because they've already gotten past all the rosy part of the relationship. What I would say instead is that you have to step back and, see, and, and seek re rational advisors like Shaykh Abdul Nasser said that will let you know if whether or not this is a good idea or not. And if it's a good idea and if the, if the fundamentals are there and the foundations are there and you can work through it and so on and so forth, then it's better, to make, it's better for you not to make a long-term mistake, something that's going to damage you for the rest of your life just because you made a short-term mistake and it's going to hurt you to get away from that. مَنْ تَرَكَ شَيْئًا لِلَّهِ عَوَضَهُ اللَّهُ خَيْرًا مِنْ You leave something for Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you something better than that. So look, if you've been in a relationship for a very long time and you really feel bad, you want to make tawbah, take a step back, ask Allah sincerely for forgiveness, then try to approach it rationally. Seek advice from people whether or not you think this can be a good marriage or not going forward. Don't try to just take the pill that's going to make you feel good now and let you get married and then everything falls apart because you did not... Marriage is a rational decision. Marriage is not an emotional decision. It is supposed to be a rational decision. It's not supposed to be an emotional decision. So that's the point here. You look for compatibility. What is the main reason that people fall apart in, in, in relationships? Compatibility, correct? Lack of compatibility. You look for compatibility. You can't find that if... You the can't, process, you can't the determine process. whether or not a person is compatible if the only thing you've seen are roses and nice restaurants and sneaking off into movie theaters and having conversations where half of the conversation is just fluff. People who want to get married should talk to each other, not ask each other what your favorite color is or what's your favorite song or, you know, do you like long walks on the beach too? And No, but like actually have serious conversations about compatibility should actually sit down and discuss things within a controlled environment where their emotions cannot get the best of them. And that's the whole purpose of not allowing absolute khalwa, absolute seclusion. Because when you're in it, that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's called the spider's web, al-ankabut, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes it as the most flimsy of houses. When you're in a spider web, when you're caught, you're caught, you can't see outside of it. It's the most flimsy of homes, but a bug that's caught inside of it, right, is not getting out. Why? Because you can't see past it. You think that that's your reality and you've resigned yourself to that. And it's irresponsible for everyone to say, okay, fine, fine, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead and ruin your life. No, if it's something that, because you're talking about parents that stood in the way of something that was unjust, that they were not justified in doing so. That's where the imam comes in or that's where someone comes in or an ally comes in and says to the parents, you need to chill. You yeah. need to calm down. Alhamdulillah, at least it's a Muslim. At least it's someone that, you know, th at least they pursued each other for the right reasons. Yes, maybe because of the circumstances, they, they thought it would be an innocent phone call. They ended up talking too many times. They ended up meeting a few times and so on and so forth. But there was still some level of conscience. And let me hold back for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At that point, you act as a facilitator. At that point, you act as a facilitator. But it's not black and white. And at the end of the day, we need to understand that when we go through relationship after relationship after relationship, up, we're, we're, we're killing our own ability to have meaningful relationships. Allah does not want that for us. It's not healthy for us to go through relationship after relationship after relationship and be broken down over and over and over again to where when we go into our seventh, eighth relationship and say, this is the one, we already are questioning and we're already, you know, we're already, uh, we already have this sense of paranoia that there's no way that it's going to work out and we've already lost our own capacity to love. 
So try to pursue things as right as you can. And then when people stand in the way in a wrong fashion, that's when you resort to those other protocols. Now, if you are, what, what, what the reality, if you've been in a relationship for a very long time, the first thing you need to do is what? The first thing you need to do is disengage tawbah. You need to ask Allah for forgiveness. The, the first party you should be concerned with in anything that happens in your life as a Muslim, as a believer, is what does Allah think about this? What have I done to offend Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The first thing you need to do is seek forgiveness. Seek forgiveness sincerely from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no matter what the outcome of the situation is. Astaghfirullah, I've messed up. Oh Allah, guide me to what's best for me. I've messed up. Because then you, you bring back the barakah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the irshad, that guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your direction in life. But when you take that out of the equation, then it's always going to be, you know, you're all, it's, it's always going to be risky uh, no matter what. But you make it so much more risky and you're still not going to pursue a path of barakah.